Britain's Pizzagate. An ongoing problem, dozens of years, weird laws. In 1982, 12 boys gave evidence, this is a key component, that they had been abused by men at a location called Elm Street House. It was an advertised gay rendezvous location and became a conspiracy theorist's dream because they never identified who it was that did any of the abuse. So it's open to apply to anybody you don't like. And do you really think politicians are going to resist that? Now I'm going to say something about British politicians. I appreciate that there's a lot more candor. I appreciate that they use a representation system that's a little bit better than the United States, or a lot, depending on what happens that year. But I'd like to say something really strictly factual about British politicians. <clears throat> they are the least scrupulous people I've ever dealt with or looked up when it comes to this particular crap. Satanic ritual abuse and child abuse and rape allegations. There, it's got to be one of the most bizarrely fucked up cultures of lying I've ever seen. And it's not lying about it happening and, and trying to cover it up at all. Quite the contrary. It's lying about it being there when it's convenient politically. I mean, everyone looks at, I, I think his name is Farage. Uh, he's the Brexit guy, as everybody calls him. And anybody watching him knows that he's a fucking weasel. Whether he's right or wrong is not relevant. He's still a weasel, in my opinion. He comes off that way. And a lot of British politicians do. Their arrogance pours out like fecal material out of the ass end of a hippopotamus. But the thing that astounds me is that they're literally willing to just jump onto any bit of tabloid bullshit. I'm, you know, we're better here in America. <laughs> so anyway, hey, give me an award for a good performance. Anyway, let's get on with it. But that's an actual incident of something happened at Elm Street. Or, excuse me, El <laughs> I'm just saying, Elm Guest House. Yes, I could do a funny title, but I won't. This is actually a serious subject. This was a location that was close to Barnes Common in southwest London and other places. In 1990, uh, 1986, this was 1982, 1986, as of that time, according to one posting I could find on it, I'm not going to look up any more of it because I don't want my search engine to look weird. The United Kingdom, the age of consent for straights was 16 years old. But if you were gay, it was 21. Which meant, by definition, if you did things that straight people could do, you could be punished for something they never would be. Just want to point that out. So we move on to the next layer. 1990. A guy named Chris Fay, a labor counselor and a, a convicted fraudster in 2011, drew up a list of public figures he didn't like, decided to accuse, and brought up the words and expressions of victims that said that these abusers had done something to him. Later on, however, some of them said that they only did that after being pressured by Chris Fay. He also later said that he regretted starting a witch hunt. It was shown that the police had been pressured in investigating allegations and not letting go of them. We're going to bring that up by Labor MP Tom Watson, who refused repeatedly to acknowledge that this was never true about any of the accused, that it was literally bullshit. Now, this was right after um, Seville and stuff, or before Seville and that sort of thing, and, and you know, Gary Glitter had happened and that sort of thing, and people were very, very sensitive to this, obviously. But the bias here that you might have noticed <coughs> is politicians getting involved. This is going to become a theme. It's been a theme in the United States. If you want a legal investigation to work, make absolutely sure that no politician can talk about it. They Did anybody watch Hillary Clinton investigation about the, the Blackberry phones? All that kind of crap, right? Okay, what about Trump? Did any of that work by politicizing it? No. Then stop fucking doing it. Or admit that you're doing it, or they're doing it, or somebody's doing it for propaganda purposes. These are deliberately done to affect elections. They're not real. And if you think this is exclusively Britain, that's bullshit. It obviously happens everywhere else. In fact, we'll just review some of that later on. But anyway, 2014, late. Carl Beach, who got the pseudonym Nick to protect his identity, protecting the accuser's identity has become a theme as well, too. He had previously been convicted of making, possessing, and 
distributing indecent images of children and voyeurism. Slow down. Carl Beach, who got the protective name Nick, was convicted of making child pornography. And this 50-year-old former National Health Service Manager from Newcastle submitted false criminal inquir injuries compensation authority claims of abuse to obtain $22,000. In the process of doing this, he had to make claims that he would then file and allow them to become part of the legal record against people. And instead of doing the normal thing of saying, I was abused by the most common group of people to abuse you, child abuse isn't from random strangers for the most part. And it's definitely not from famous people most of the time. Most of the time. Most of the time it's in your family. Yes, I know about Gary Glitter and, uh, and Seville and all that, but that's not the point. The vast majority, like 99, actually it's 99% of them, are relatives, family members, siblings, or trusted family members. They're not they're, they're trusted people within, within the family group. You're not supposed to be worrying about people who are outside of your family doing anything illegal or morally wrong to your children because that won't happen as often as a random person that you trust doing it. People who do this stuff gain trust of the relatives or friends or the child. Refusing to acknowledge this fact means that every person who screams Pizzagate is setting themselves up to make sure their children are very vulnerable to abuse. Stop doing that. But anyway... <clears throat> So anyway, the guy, uh, Carl Beach, was just kinda trying to get $22,000. And he also made false allegations to the police that caused Operation Midland to happen and had been contacted by investigative journalism website XRO. So he sold a story to them, and they sold the stories to newspapers, which means it biased everything. It wasn't a leaked story. And he did this to get $22,000 because he wanted to demand compensation and he had to file cases in order to get it. The mixture of public outrage this caused and propaganda used by politicians put immense pressure through the Home Secretary on the police. Beach invoked the memory of an eight-year-old, I can't pronounce his name, who disappeared in, two, in 1981, and a bunch of other people. He was lying. 2015, Wiltshire Force, the Wiltshire Police Force, Mike Vale, commenced Operation Conifer. This ended up being a 1.5 million pound investigation of a dead man on the word of the same person, Carl Beach. The Metropolitan Police... Oh, excuse me. Uh, I have to point this out. 2015, September, Metropolitan Police said that they should never have asserted the claims were true by this guy. No firm corroborative evidence had been found, They, but they didn't want to be accused of not, not investigating properly because of the fact that they didn't investigate the other police forces. Real pedophiles had happened. They raided the, an accused man's house, even though he was dead, without telling his widow any of this, while acknowledging that the accusations were never valid, because they still wanted to look like they were doing something. Now, months before, to stoke all of this, a Catholic priest named Tony McSweeney went on trial in Southwark Crown Court for abuse related to Grafton Close children's home and he got convicted it may not have been at the location but you get the idea this was actually this is actually a problem but you notice that's a person who is it's a catholic priest okay obviously you, you, you know well of course but the other thing is to be blunt about it he was a person who was put in a position of power and trust directly related to involving and erecting with children anyway 2016 early all of this ended, finally, after politicians had been accused of abusing their positions to influence the police inquiries, <coughs> casting aspersions on alleged abusers, especially political opponents, using this as a, um, a drum to pound to get elected as being hard on crime and going after abusers, because none of them could be in your family. It has to be politicians or famous people or the gays. The Metropolitan Police had to confess that this mess was never true in the first place at that point. And they ended up paying out money. And they probably will still. 2017. No further corroborative evidence was found to support satanic abuse claims. Yes, that was done as well, of course. Because nothing says credibility like saying, The devil made me do it. Or the devil makes everybody do it. 
September 2017, <clears throat> the police agreed to pay compensation to the falsely accused, and we'll probably be in deep trouble for it. 2018, July, Carl Beach was finally charged with perverting the cause of justice and fraud because he lied about a group of people. The evidence used against them included discredited allegations of satanic abuse. Who was accused? I'm going to read them last. Because these are people who are exonerated by the fact that this person faked evidence. Or not. I mean, they could still be guilty of something, but they're still going to be hounded because one of the things about satanic ritual abuse or whatever is it's considered a badge of your religious pride and faith to continually accuse someone who's been found innocent forever simply because you can get away with it because you can feign an indifference to the facts and say, I believe what I'm doing. Well, your belief and faith are not relevant when you're guilty of tracking someone down and trying to hurt them or threatening them or posting hundreds and hundreds of YouTube videos about that and other incidents where people were accused of shit and they were found not guilty and the person who was doing the accusing was found to have fabricated all of it. In some cases, the people who make these allegations were nowhere near anybody that, was, that they were accusing, so there's no way they could have been abused by them. It's not just not being able to prove something, it's that you can definitely show that the person was lying. In 2018, September, Mike Vale was found guilty of an independent, by the Independent Office for Police Conduct for providing and maintaining an inaccurate account of how he damaged his work mobile phone. Because now it was really caused when he smashed his golf ball bag when he was angry playing golf. In anger. It was never to hide contact with various parties over the Wiltshire Police Satanic Abuse Investigation, or anything else like that. Hillary Clinton could not be contacted for comment on this because her BlackBerry phones are all on fire. Yeah, I, I can exonerate Hillary Clinton for the email thing. I could even say that this is a stupid reference to the BlackBerry phones. But it's still freaking funny. But you, you literally <laughs> smashed your phone and thought that would get rid of the data. I'm available for data recovery. I'm not I'm not kidding. I'll do it. You probably still have the physical parts of the phone, right? Mike, that doesn't actually erase the phone. You know that, right? That's what I criticize Celery over. Smashing a BlackBerry doesn't get rid of it. You have to mechanically dismantle it and pull off all of the little black chips and put them in a coffee grinder and then run them through a microplane and then poop on it. So anyway, let's get on with the names of the accused that were never guilty in the first place of these crimes and such. One of them, by the way, died thinking he was going to have his ma name destroyed forever because some politician wanted to pr puff themselves up. Former members of Parliament, Harvey Proctor, Graville Janner, the former Home Secretary, Leon Breton, the former Prime Minister, Edward Heath, the former Chief of the Defense Staff, Lord Brommel, the former Director of the Secret Intelligence Service, Maurice Ofield and a former director general of MI5, Michael Hanley. And maybe you. The reason you're supposed to give a shit about false accusations like this is because, uh, let's just do alt, uh, alt righty then. Uh, you're a guy and you get falsely accused of rape because no evidence seems to be needed anymore for destroying your reputation on the internet. Same thing with being accused of being a pedophile or having possession of, of something illegal. Do you know? ridiculously common this is? Do you know how... I mean, it's utterly... I mean, you, it's very depressing when this stuff happens to people because you see, well, there's nothing you can do about it. An accusation equals guilt. That's why this is used. It's effective. Witch hunts work because no one punishes the witch hunters. Thanks for watching. Have a good day. Good luck with that. And, uh, yeah, this is Britain's Pizzagate. And it's been going on for decades. I hope we can get through ours and not have it happen continually. I doubt it. It's about the same year ours started, really.